All right, everyone. Welcome to episode three of Train and Gain podcast. I am John Kioskarigis, and this is my I'm brother. John DePaulo. How are you guys doing? Doing very well. Uh, we have a couple of cool topics to talk about today. And one thing I really want to talk about was the things that made us excited when we were first training, which are the hardcore gyms. What is a quote unquote hardcore gym? What does that mean? People have probably heard this term so many times before. The way I like to describe it is a place where you're super comfortable, but has that essence of what it was like to be in the old school type gyms where it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be, all right, I'm going to stop for a second. What I'm going to say is I went to a gym recently where it is a hardcore gym and I love it, but it was so dirty inside. <laughs> you already know what I'm talking about. It was so dirty inside that I just felt like- You fell in love with it. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm in love with this. Now I went, my God. I said, okay, this is this is a hardcore gym in every sense of the word, but you, know, you can't clean the machines off? I mean, seriously, this was this bugged me. So I don't mean that. It doesn't have to be dirty or grimy or anything like that. Am I right? Hey, that filth it grows on you, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, it does. You're wiping, <laughs> it comes it, funk. wiping that filth off the tricep. <laughs> filth funk. All right. So a couple of hardcore gyms that um, I really liked uh, that I want to touch up on was it's in Brooklyn. It's no longer there anymore. There's a beloved, beloved gym of mine. It's called Fifth Ave Gym. Uh, I believe it was on like... Um, Fifth Avenue, obviously Fifth Avenue gym. I think 16th uh, Street. Yeah, Fifth Avenue, 16th, around there, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, you'd walk into this atmosphere and, you know, uh, it was the times when I was training for contests and I would go in and I'd feel this, this magnetic vibe. I mean, the music would be blasting really loud. You walk down to a basement. I usually don't like the downstairs types gyms, but... Man, you'd walk down there. Fear factor. Oh, it was amazing. You were sort of intimidated, but you were but at drawn, the same time ex drawn. excited, right? It's a mysterious thing. You've you know? been there before. Five days a week. <laughs> Man, how did you like it? I loved it. You know, they always say you got to become comfortable being uncomfortable. And that first trip down that stairs was like, what I, thought I, I, was in a I thought I was in a torture chamber. That's but a great that. way to describe it. And mind you, you can't see much. You're walking down the stairs. There's a wall here. But you hear it sounds like a torture chamber. You hear ah! all sorts of grunts. It sounds like it's, it's bizarre. But when you get down there, you see people working, working. Very different from today. Working harder, hard. Georgie right in. So I remember when I was doing my contest training and just talking back about Fifth Ave Gym. Before I had gone there, I remember what you were touching up on what you said about working, working really hard. Working hard. I remember one guy approached me. And he, not intentionally, but I was just in the zone and I'm doing my workouts. And I remember it was, I was going from like a hack squat, super second with a leg press. And it was a vigorous five set routine that I almost took no break with. Like you normally train now. Exactly. Like keep an, moving around. Like I normally train now. Correct. <laughs> right. Like moving from bouncing across the wall still. <laughs> Things haven't changed. We're still going wall to wall. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> well, it's a good thing though. Um, so when I was doing that, but I remember him coming up to me. And then after my workout was done, he went, I said, man, I saw you over there and I felt like you were a little hesitant to approach me. And I started to laugh and he went, nah, bro, I knew that you were, you were working Wait, and I didn't want to bother you. He said that to you? you he said, said that to me. Oh, wow. And I went, wow. That's, Respectful. I, I gave instant respect, but also I went, man, did I really come off like that? But then- He must have resonated with something. Exactly. Yeah. And going back to that resonance, it came from <clears throat> these types of gyms, like Fifth Ave, like you were saying, you go down there, it's just dark, you hear the music blasting, you go downstairs grunting. and it's just grunting. And there's there's guys down there that are working hard because that's that's their body and they care about it. Hey, you know what gym is just as close to that now? Yeah. Steel's gym. Tell me about it. I've never been there, to be honest with you. But I have an idea from seeing the pictures online and yeah. what people tell me. Because people like what we like, the old school dungeon-like gyms. <laughs> and um, I, I think it's on like in the mid-30s in the west side. But dude, it's all dungeons type cobblestone, cinder block walls, people grinding. You just hear the, the reflection of their voice echoing between the wall. You don't see much lacking in there. It's hard work in there. I feel like if you took a- uh, Drawn to that, man. I love that kind of stuff. And I, I, I know that's what we have had in common throughout the whole time. Maybe that's why I found you in these gyms. I was like, <laughs> you know what else, John? When I look at the gym, you might look at it this way too. It's like a battleground to me. So it's the place I enter has to fit the visual in my mind. My, my mind sees my body going to war. So when I see that kind of grinding, 
going down the stairs and stepping into the abyss, <laughs> the, un the unknown, and they, they work hard. My brain resonates with that. You know, thinking about what you just said right there, I, um, <laughs> you know, I have instances where <laughs> I'm in an environment that isn't like that, but then all of a sudden, you know, you have your iPods on, the song is changing to the next song. <clears throat> I'm training intensely and all you hear is scream, you know, but it's not the environment that is like hardcore place. And I, I can't help but actually laugh because I went, man, this would be, it, it would fit somewhere else, but why should it not fit here? But I mean, the point is that when I would go to these places and that grunting would happen, yeah. you wouldn't want to laugh because it was, it was serious business going on. It was different. And it, it brought something out of you. It, yeah. Anytime I contest trained, I always would go to those gyms just because it would make me gravitate towards it. Like Bev's going there every time. I feel like this and everyone feels the same way whenever you check it out. If you haven't, I, I recommend it. Yeah. But you go there and you just, you know you're in a different place. Yeah. You know you know you're there because it's that camaraderie. It's, it's that constructive, hardcore, um, not even criticism, but you have that embodiment of everyone around you working equally as hard, challenging yeah, you man. to be your best. I agree. That gym could bring back life after death. That's so puts a lot of life into you. Yeah, well, it happened with me where I took that two, three months off and I was at a sort of a low point. Yeah, I feel bad for that. T tell me about that again. Yeah, you know, I was at a, I was at sort of a low point uh, throughout the beginning of this year and I was going through some things and yeah. I had to sort of gradually progress through them. And what really, really helped me was, you know, reaching out to you. And that honestly brought a lot of stuff back. You know, it really did. And maybe it was by chance, but I reconnected with you only a short period ago. I mean, I've known you for a long time and we've yeah. kept in touch here and there, but I was in LA for nine years, came back uh, to Brooklyn. And so when I, went to, when I went to the gym and I saw you there, it was just at this point where I was sort of going through going some through stuff. Going through a downtrod. Yeah, I was going through life. a downtrod. Yeah. And um, that was back in what, March? Two years ago, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. So when I when I had gone through this, we we're like, hey, you know what I think will help you? Let's go to Bev's. Yeah, man. <laughs> and it's it, start it, off the visual. Oh my God. And I got back into it and I went, My God, this is where this is like the essence. <clears throat> this gym has a lot of life to it. So when he went John was going through a downtrodden phase in his life, I know he's got a passion for training. The question is how we could, how can we reignite that fire? What if it been a place to go to Bev's? It's like the upper echelon of all the gyms when it comes to intensity. So we took him there, and I think we went there twice, right? We did, yeah. Tw we went there twice, and I felt like after the second time we trained, he was good to go. Like I got trust the guy to go home into Jersey and train daily. And did it happen? Absolutely. We laughed, but did it happen? No, it did. You know, I never... Here's the thing. I never thought that this would actually ever happen to me because training has always been a big part of my life. But, you know, when you go through low points, it sucks, man. And um, you really need to be able to have motivating factors. And sometimes when you don't have those around you, it can be really difficult. And so mm -hmm. what I would say is that, you know, reach out to somebody that has that same thing in common with you, whether it be watching a movie, who knows? Mine was I knew that fitness would trigger it because I knew that it sets the pace for me. It has it sets the bar for discipline for me and it sets the bar for me moving forward. And when I reached out to John, it was great because it brought me back into that world again. And um, and I kind of haven't looked back and I know that now for myself, I learned little things and I know that, that if I have something like that that happens, I get myself back in there and it brings me back on course, it resets me. Bring, makes you feel like yourself, like one unit. Yeah, exactly. Mind, totally. body, and spirit, right? For sure. Got water for you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, brother. I was wondering, <laughs> no, I was wondering where it went. I thought maybe it was a goblin behind <laughs> me <or> something. <laughs> no, man. I mean, uh, that's that's kind of the the product of all this is that being in these being in these environments is you know bringing up the topic of that motivational part of you that you know what gets a person into a gym like like a hardcore gym where you find these kinds of places and we're trying to we're running down a tiny little bit of a list and after bevs we have uh you want to talk about world gym yeah it's a famous known gym i've one that's not known to me i've never been there before but what these gyms when you say what gets them into the hardcore gym you said or gyms in general yeah what gets people into a motivating factor so for us it was hardcore gyms and for someone else it might be just something that they need a little bit of a push what gives you that push what you gives us that push you said it right there perhaps something that resonates with you 
So like you said before, we went to the hardcore. Why? We resonated with power. Mm. They might have to they might have mm. to come up with some kind of visual or maybe they got a passion. Maybe they love baseball. Okay. You want to still keep throwing just as hard. You want to be just as mobile and move laterally. That's what baseball is, side to side, right? It's only going to happen one way. Happen in the gym. There's your factor. You see? It depends on what people want to do, right? Yeah, definitely. I feel, you know, being truthful to yourself, <clears throat> number one, is going to really help you figure that out. You know, I mean, I would say there's so many of these things that provide intimidation. And, you know, was I intimidated a little bit by going into these gyms? Yeah, sure. Of course I was. In the but very beginning? In the very beginning, yeah. yeah. Naturally. But then it becomes a thing where I already knew that, you know, you associate with something like goal-driven, hard, hardworking, and, and power. Yeah. And you go into these places and, and you already know that those three things are on your side. Yeah. You got nothing else to worry about. You just go into your work. And you'd be surprised at the camaraderie you'd find. Absolutely. You know, in these types of gyms that we're talking about, because um, I remember World Gym. I remember like them, uh, all, especially the golden era, them wearing the World Gym shirts. Yeah. It's a big, big deal. The stringers and everything. Yeah, yeah. I love those shirts. They're <laughs> great. You like those? Freaking string shirts. Um, I like the regular tank tops for some reason. Hells yeah. I keep my nipples quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, you know, they they pop out every now and again when I'm doing some some flies, but that's, uh, you know, it's my own personal use, not anyone else. <laughs> hey, one algorithm, okay? One algorithm. <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> so now we're going to go to um, uh, R&J Gym. That's actually famous. Lou, Lou Ferrigno Fer put that on the map. Lou Ferrigno's Gym. Iron. I've never been in there either. But from watching Pump and I and those who have seen it, it's it's it looks like a basement, grungy, dungy, hardcore place. Well, plus it was in the neighborhood that we fairly frequent in, in our lives. I would say it was Mill Basin, if that's correct. All the people who live on East 32nd, no, East 29th and Avenue U, you tell me what that is. Sounds like maybe Mill Basin or yeah. Bergen Beach, one of those two. Yeah, absolutely. But it was a hardcore gym, and I just remember it being a typical. There wasn't much machines back then. It's not. It was pretty bare bones. You well, know, just the people in there. I guess made the atmosphere what it was. Well, this is how you know, because from what I remember seeing, Lou Frigno was doing a standing overhead dumb uh, barbell press. No one does that no more. Now they have these seated machines. So we you know, these Cybex uh, um, with the pin selectorized machines or plate loading machines, something them to keep your core. <clears throat> station abiding by one one unit of a system and not work it becomes a mobile you know that's another good point that you made because you know talking about this list of gyms leading that, you into know, imbalance we've right? seen yeah well i'm going to get to that especially for sure okay because you're very good at that um but going back into saying you know all these gyms that we were talking about the hardcore versions you're right they only had a certain select few of machines that's right so you only had people doing you know, bench press or a deadlift or like uh, of standing leg, you know, seated um, uh, shoulder o press. press. But the real movements that really create muscle mass for, Absolutely. All, for all you go is out there that want to become big and strong. You guys got to stick to the bread and butter. What works? I, I advocate that too. And not as something that's saying, you know, this is a systematic thing, but it really does work because if you have the core, uh, there's a reason why they have these contests for power lifters. You have a deadlift, you have a squat, you have a bench press, mm -hmm. and you have probably sometimes, not all the time, usually those three is cumulative for your weight, but then you have the shoulder press as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really does build a foundation of stretching the muscle fascia, right? Yeah, yeah. Making sure that you're hitting the deep tissue mm -hmm. and you don't have to hit it crazy where I used to do it too, where I would go down to like one rep. Yeah. There's no real need to that unless you're going to compete, I feel, in a contest because you're trying to get a combined weight, whereas now you're just trying to actually build your muscle tissue. Yeah, man, those one reps will kill you. That's really taxing joints. So a lot of people today, it's it's an ego lift, a one rep max. It's an ego lift. You don't generate enough reps to generate muscle tissue. That's the problem. Does it look cool? Yeah. So does a muscle up. They look really cool. But you got to do minimal three reps to start generating muscle tissue or contractile force on the muscle tissue, not on the joint. How could you have, how could you lock into perfect form on one rep? Even when I, before I execute my sets, I have, my first rep is called my set rep. We don't count it. It's called a set rep. I have a barbell on me. Take it off the rack. Right away, your core is going to balance. It's going to fight your balance. You got to find your count to balance. Okay, I'm ready. Fire. One, two, 
Yeah, people take the weight down. They just start juggling the damn thing. And they wonder why they have imbalances. One side is bigger than the other. Or well, they wonder why they get muscle tears. Nothing's controlled. There's no more proprioception, mind to muscle connection. All that is lost. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I feel like the ego does play a lot of a lot of power into that. And it even happens with myself if I'm in the gym and I want to do like a one rep max. I think differently now because you know, I get in there and, and yeah, you know, if I want to do a one rep max, run one rep max, it would be great, but it starts to hurt my knees when you do the squat afterwards, even when you wrap them. And I always wrap them when I'm doing heavy sets, but now it's like you were saying, mastering the weight, Yeah. you know, and in those hardcore gyms, they mastered those weights because that's what they had. You know, that's what was building the foundation for them. Shout out to BK. Daniel. Danny, you know who you are? You know Danny? I do know Danny, yeah. You it's know good, why, good. what made me take notice to Danny? Danny knows this. You know what it is? He was doing push downs. And for a man that's very, very, like a stickler for form, good form, I watched, I said, this kid is resonating with his muscle. He was doing a push down involving a tempo. What's a tempo? The speed, meaning one second down, one second. He wasn't all over the place, looking like he was juggling. And I said, wow, this, this, this kid's got potential. I wanted to make him grow more. You remember what he did? He was just a counter guy, just checking the memberships. I says, bro, you were meant for something better. You got to become a trainer and in the city where the money is, where people are serious. Chase the athletes. They have to work. Not one that wants to look good for the beach. That's not a real person. Yeah, you know they'll be there every week because they're determined for a it's, goal. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. You're talking about a beach. I'm talking about a lifestyle. You know, it's, it's why I... When you train, you defy the odds. Your cells are supposed to age quick. And you, you know what facilitates that? A lot of training. But also not moving enough. There's like a little bit of a, a battle there going on. You got to control it though. Yeah, it's a huge battle. You and it all goes back to where your mindset's at. It's, it starts in the gym. Absolutely. I, I want to- Real quick about yeah. Danny. Now he's a personal trainer now in the city. And I think it's called Temple, the gym. It's a really upscale gym. He's around quality, high quality people who know physical therapy work, or they might know corrective work, functional movements, things like that, things that he needs because he's young and he's smart and he's re highly receptive. So he, I mean, the kid's a trainer now. So talking to a younger, a younger generation, you know, and, and motivating or instilling some sort of, it, it almost sounds like you're not giving like a product of, hey, let me, let me, you know, almost wave uh, a little dial in front of your face and hypnotize you into doing something. It was more of a, it came from a genuine place of saying, you know, I see potential in you. Absolutely. Let's see what you do with this potential. Absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to say, Hey, let me help you with this and this and this. Are you going to take that? What are you going to do with it? And he obviously took it and made something of it. How does that make you feel? And what motivating factors uh, did you see aside from that, that really said, Hey, this guy has got something that. Consistency. Younger generation doesn't. Yeah. Well, I really don't want to disqualify them because he's part of the younger generation. Right. And if I've... That's a good point. If I've actually discovered him, I'm sure I'll discover many more. Different gyms. Sure. This is one gym. And as I look around, scan the area, I don't see much. When you see him, you see energy. You're flying. You see nothing but energy, right? So when you see that kind of energy, it's on here now. Not like... It. Let, me go, let me get that one off. Yeah. There we go. So, we so a, a when something. you see him, you see something special. And you might feel special yourself. The way you train, the way what you've progressed, that's a special thing at your age, right? Well, he's real young to have that mindset and to have that connection with the muscle. So it makes you kind of want to make him better because you know you know more and you know he's a lion. He's hungry to learn too. Makes you feel like you're taking a special role in someone's life. You're fulfilling what you love to do, but you're putting in someone who you know is not going to take it Spit, spit it out and go live a different life. They're gonna follow, this kid's going to follow things. He's going to be consistent. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see it because when you see him frequently, you see the changes. Well, I bring up that point too because I was in that same position when I met you yeah. long ago. And I, I really heeded that advice that you were giving because a lot of the people back then were very encouraging to me of you know, saying, hey, you, know, you should compete. And I said, oh, what is that? You know, and I started to look into it and research it. And, you know, the more I got motivated from that was because of the people that I was around and I was surrounded by. And if there wasn't someone like you there or someone like, you know, uh, Big Ali or these other Who guys. Want to bring out the better in you. Yeah, absolutely. I felt like it was a real genuine thing that 
you know, a younger generation like I was could really benefit from like you just did with, with someone that you know. Yeah, man. Well, you see, you were open-minded. You were willing to, to learn, to listen. I, you're the kind of guy that you got a strong attribute. Not many people can have that. When you want to learn, even if you, th you think in your mind, hey, am I, am I resigning power to this person by humbling myself? No, not really. Because you see there's more, there's profit in it Yeah. for you. Forget about my ego. What are you going to gain from this? So you'll take that first step just to get that and not care how he looks at you or she looks at you. Follow? You have that in you. So when I see that, I see a strong person. Why can't I make him stronger? Why can't I teach him things that he has not been introduced to in the bodybuilding community? Right? I'm not saying that they all don't know what they're doing. But let's face it. There's a lot, there's a lot, a lot of self-proclaimed gurus out there that are hurting people, you know, in one way or another. And there's people who just don't know... I don't want to say it's wrong, but it's not maximizing things to their fullest potential. If I can make him big and strong, that's easy. But how about op making, opening, fixing some imbalances or some weak muscles that'll open up his other muscles more and make them fire even more? Something fires more, it could only grow more. It could only get stronger more. You understand? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, how do you feel about that? I. I don't know, just like hearing you say that it got me a little, it got some good emotions stirring up because I felt, you know, there was someone there that was on my side. And a lot of the times you get into these gyms nowadays and not people, yeah, people don't know where to go. They're, okay. they're lost and it's not their fault. It's just the fact of you feel like everything's and everyone's against you immediately. Well, everybody's lost. It's all how you, how you handle that. They're lost and they're trying to overcompensate that while being different, like maybe acting arrogant. Right. When you're the one that's big and strong thinking, I could be arrogant, I could be twice as arrogant, I'm not choosing that path, what's making you choose that path? Let yourself go, man. You'd be surprised what you could learn. Not everyone's out to kill you. Some people could, and you don't know. You don't know until you decode it. Someone says something you don't like, bye. You got yeah. two feet, you got 10 toes, right? You know, going into uh, the next part of the gym I want to talk real, about real quick, was- I think it's yeah. also human, humanly instinctual to, to know and filter out if you got experience, you only get experience by approaching what's what they call chew the meat and spit out the bones, old, old term expression. Meaning what I say to you, maybe 65% is 70% is good. And I know 30% is based on drama. Spit that part out. It's so funny how I connected sometimes we are because I was just going to talk about this. I got to be an artist, man. No, you, gotta, you got to create a visual. It's freaking crazy. So I, mean, I was like- I can't draw my, my way out of a paper bag. I even tried tracing my two brothers, real quick story. Yeah. They're artists. When you're young, you always want to blend in with your family. So I'm sitting, watching them draw, going, I'm try this. And they're talking amongst each other. They're doing the He-Man role play. I'm like, I want to be part of He-Man too. And I'm like, I can't even draw in the lines. And they're laughing at me. Go, oh. I says, we'll see about that. <laughs> Tomorrow I'll come back big and stronger. I came back with trace paper. I tried to trace. I couldn't even do that. I said, dude, you're just a freaking athlete probably. Go outside, swing a bat, or do it, punch a bag. <laughs> right? Well, it kind of worked too because you're into boxing as well. Yes, yes. I have but, a student of war. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Like, even going back to the next gym is Dolphin, uh, the old Dolphin on 15th. 15th Avenue. Um, that's now closed down. Um, but it used to be uh, this place where you'd go into and it was, you know, it was clean, very clean. And it had excellent excellent equipment in there it did but you know going back and to that same still. thing oh it does it, absolutely the 124 does i i still would recommend that it's got solid equipment you know but going back to that structure of spinning out the bones you know i'd have people come up to me in there and at that point i was at a a high competition level i was winning some titles and stuff and yeah and i said to myself you know i had people come up to me and give me adv advice and they give you advices <laughs> <laughs> you know they would give me advice Back to Arnold. <laughs> but they would say you know i got he's 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 the he's the hero it's this man's hero points. arnold schwarzenegger you know he he's done a lot as far as um preaching what i needed at a certain point because everyone needed to have and i'd have po you know posts of him and frank zane and colombo on my wall and you know people would come in and look at it at the same same time be like oh what's going on with this guy <laughs> but you know i mean i felt like it was embracing a culture and uh and i'll never i've never looked back from that point on but you know when people would come up to me and give me some advice inside the gym during that time when i was on this good streak i would kind of sometimes I would be like, wow, that's actually fascinating. I didn't know that. And then sometimes I knew that they were 
wrong or off because I have tried it and I've experienced it and it's not the way you're telling me you could do it. And that doesn't work that, that way. Happens. I can't stand when that happens. Yeah, it's so, so annoying. So one eye goes up crooked. Exactly. So I would kind of like have one eyebrow raised and I'm like, that doesn't sound quite right. And then you spit out the bones, but maybe one or two things you said I could take now and apply it. That's what maybe. I'm, that's what I mean. Shoot the meat. Yeah. Spit out the bones. Oh, well, I mean, how could you feel? I mean, that was like a place where even at 12 a.m. there'd be, you know, the same music blasting. It'd be a great camaraderie. Dolphins, right? Yeah, great yeah, friendships 20, in there. 24 hours, yeah. So nice. Uh, the reason that I stopped going to that gym was because I wanted to go where those heavier dumbbells. Other than, other than that, the gym had everything I needed. And this is at a, was a long time ago. Yeah. But I've always been drawn to Harvard Fitness. Maybe my workout partner, he's there, and I respect this man much like I respect Johnny. So when I respect him, I'll go to the extra mile for them. So, we, you know, we, we train in there. When we don't train, I usually go to the one in Mill Basin. Got heavier weights. I remember uh, we were in there. We saw some funny antics that was going on when you put me through. Uh, he put me through a brutal, <laughs> that's like my, unexpected brutal uh, hack squat. Yeah, but... Seeing antics in gyms, 30, 40 that's, reps. that's like that's like not finding b like bear shit in the woods, you know, when you go through the woods. Yeah. You're always going to see that everywhere you go, antics. And that's, but, a, that's another point that you're trying to make. I want you to press on that a little bit because sometimes I feel like it breaks people out of not wanting to go back to a certain place. And then it then <laughs> destroys your workout and your routine because now oh, it's the closest thing to you. It's working out for you, but now you don't want to go back to because of this. How do you, this how do you mitigate that? There's something I could talk about mitigating for probably 10 hours. But I have to throw a lot of people under the bus. <laughs> I won't do that. <laughs> I feel like, if I'm understanding you correctly, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. When you say antics, right? People acting out out of sheer insecurity, and now perhaps they're doing that. Maybe we'll use for an example, maybe a guy, and he's beating on his chest. Oh, he's doing bench press because he's within proximity of uh, a pretty girl. Yeah. And doesn't know how quite to communicate with her because insecurities are flaring. Yeah. Or she's, growing I mean, she's growing increasingly drawn to her, doesn't know how to act. So he resorts to being a barbarian, being on his chest, you know, with bongo drums. You know, I laugh oh, at this kind of stuff because it's. No, it's it's hilarious to me in a way because I, I even want to take it a step further and I want to say that. It's something that would be out of character for yeah. someone inside a facility where you're working out that doesn't apply. Like if you wanted to go and box and hit a bag, why would you want to do they got the deadlift rack? You of know, course. that makes, makes no sense makes to me. No it makes sense. no logical sense. So there must be some other reason why someone else would do something like that. And it goes back to the acting out. I mean, you see it constantly here and there. And I feel like it's more of a territorial thing. I feel like people that think so. don't have a strange, you know, a good mindset or foundation, someone that's new, right? Which I'm always projecting at because... I'm a big advocate for trying to get people involved in fitness, whether you're trying to do it for 30 minutes, whether it's a run, just get yourself active. Absolutely. You know, and, and a gym would be a great way to do that. And sometimes you have this stuff happen and then it turns that person off. He doesn't want to come back anymore. Yeah, man. I, th I think that's like a little bit of an imbalance in somebody. They, don't, they just don't know how to act. And like you said, it takes a real strong-minded person to overlook that. And sometimes you got these pretty women coming and joining the gym. They're like, you know, the babe in the woods too, some of them. So you see them walk around where they hold on to their hands for dear life and they're looking like, where should I go? Where should I go? Where's the meatheads? Let me stay away from them. Whatever they're thinking in their little- It's all a big typecast, yeah. It really is. It definitely is. But if you're someone acting up like that, trying to get someone's attention, you might scare them more. And that's what brings them away and keeps them in the aerobic room <laughs> hiding. Right. Some people are vultures. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's crazy to think about that too because- it, Sad. it defeats the whole purpose of why they had gotten in there and the intention of why they got in there. And someone would, you know, maybe that has a low self-esteem or, you know, had gone through depression and I've gone through depression myself. Yeah. And I'll touch up on that in mental health when we get to that topic. Um, but I mean, at the same time is that it, it can be really deliberating and defeating for, yeah. for you to kind of experience that on a daily basis. And now your, your one outlook is now kind of destroyed because. Because of somebody. Someone else. Yeah. Again, it goes back to how strong you could, like, if it's someone just fresh in the gym, me a problem. They might move away. Some of them might be strong enough to overlook it too. But the probability, the vast majority, it, it, it deters them. What would you say to the one that is getting deterred that's fresh? 
to the woman. And well, to the, the man, man or man or woman that would want to that is fresh in the gym and now experiences this and is dealing with these these issues. I'd say, listen, as you press forward, go deeper into this gym. This is not to be taken the wrong way, but you're going to see some things that some odd behaviors. This is part of humanity. People are different. Some people are eccentric. Some make no sense, and some are doing what they're just in their own world, and some are just on the phone. If you see something that seems like an attack to your character, overlook it. Chances are it's not you. It might just be an antic. You know, and, and I, I have told some people this too. <clears throat> well, you've told me this. That's why I wanted to press on it a little bit because you you're an excellent training partner because you. you're welcome. Because you're you're so dedicated and invested in in the other person that's with you. Dialed in. You're so dialed in. And I mean, I've been through some vigorous workouts with you where even I would get a little bit distracted, which doesn't happen as often nowadays. You know, before, yeah, of course, there's antics that go on. But I've gotten to a point where I've trained myself in a way to not worry about it. But yeah. at the same time is you're like, you sat me there and you're like, John, you stay with me. Stay with me. Okay? Yeah. Focus on it. Don't worry about everything else. You see that? That's happening. You see how that's happening? You stay with me. And you gave me that energy that got me through that. So maybe a good recommendation too would be go with someone that you – have a good rapport with, and you both yeah. get involved in, yeah. in the gym together so that you can lean on each other now do you also and not remember, worry about that. Do you remember also what else I told you about that How to and one way how to handle that? Do you remember? No, I don't. Okay, refresh your memory on the audience as well. Remember I told you, listen, these antics, you need them. It's reassurance. Someone is invested in you, and they're just projecting it in an insecure way perhaps. But without that projection of insecurity, how do you know? How, how are you being validated you're doing the right thing you get it they play into them you use that and you convert that to energy that's all it is it's like playing a game of pac-man they're just another pellet right it's right more energy you use that as an as gobbling up energy convert for it to energy absorb it convert it the proper way don't let it get the best of you you get the best of it that's great advice i mean i feel like one you more know, way of maintaining control within your gym vicinity too yeah absolutely it goes back to that control of just going in there having you know having a set plan and then trying not to deter from that plan is what i would say too is giving giving any type of advice to that, is going into that with that mindset go into you that kind with, of structure yourself well control over yourself yeah you got control over yourself you make logical decisions well plus you make that mind muscle connection too you're so you're so dialed in nothing really bothers you exactly that's why it doesn't bother me no more because i was always dialed in and now i'm, I'm dialed in meaning I, I see what I'm doing before I walk in there. It's a matter of time before it converts into a reality. And when I get in, I kind of like see everyone. They watch you when you walk again, just to see who's walking in. But most people absorb that way. They look around, who's looking at me? I'm just walking like I'm walk, like I walk on a plank or something. Yeah, <laughs> I'm absolutely. walking on my death sentence because I know I'm going to lift some heavy weight. And if you're squatting, you know, the law, right? What goes down must come up. Oh, it can be super scary. I just experienced this again. It always happens, you know, when you need a motivating factor. But I mean, I'm underneath a squat rack and I know it's a lot of a lot of weight, weight. and I'm trying to master the weight, like you were saying. You get at least four or five reps, right? And, you know, you're on that. You already know the initial first rep's going to break you down the gravity of what's on your back the set rep and now you're dealing with all these outside factors so it's really important in those times to really focus and zone yourself in as any athlete would know is that doing that gets you through the next one but it's always good to have someone there to observe what you're doing to help you through that the only thing worse than that is someone who doesn't know how to spot and they can make something that's hard become harder yeah. possibly an injury too i would i would definitely you know, that's a huge thing for me too, is if someone's going to spot you, just, you know, make sure that, you know, you're comfortable with their qualification set. They can be the biggest guy in the world in the most horrible spot you can ever imagine. And it could be very dangerous, you yeah. know, when you're going into these things with heavy weight, you know, it drops on you, you're finished. So that, that's something I'd also be wary of. I had someone spot me one time to this day. I believe it was the, it was actually what um, perpetuated an onset of a shoulder injury. Yeah. So I was I was shoulder pressing behind my neck. You know that's not anatomically correct, right? No, it it I've even done it and it felt very awkward. Just kind of it because you're taking almost your, hurts this part, and I don't know where that exercise came from. But it, cervical spine, your neck. It's 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 not good for you though. Because you're hyperextending your cervical spine. It wasn't meant to be in that position. Mm. And then pressing behind your neck, 
you're kind of like putting a lot of pressure on your shoulder girdle and stretching it in an unnecessary way. Works up and down. Doesn't work back here. What are you gonna hang yourself? And what are you doing? Right. So I was at 205, the plate and the 35 on each side. And I asked this guy to spot me. Was this recent or was it um, back sometime? I was 23 years old. Wow. I remember I want to hear this now. So it was in Jacqueline Bally's. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. On 86th yeah. Street. And I'm doing the press of my neck and I'm able to do about seven reps on my own. Now I have him standing there spotting me. What do you think he does on the eighth rep? He yanks that shit so hard away from me that I almost blow out. I, I didn't blow it out my shoulder, but this low, something, something happened. I never went, because you're so young, you don't go for an MRI. You don't go for an x-ray. Why? Because you can still move it the next day. <laughs> you don't care. And you're, you're very resilient at that age, right? You feel like you're untouchable. Indomitable, man. A force to be reckoned with. But I, my shoulder was never the same. Never the same. And the reason why I know that might have perpetuated the onslaught is because it's always hurt since then. I don't remember getting a little better after that. I thought it was natural. Maybe this is pain from the gym. You don't know. You're younger. You don't make that connection. But now I have a connection. And I know it was a bad thing. So, guys, don't press behind your neck. <laughs> That's always a good Let advice. Let me be walking testament to what that could do. The cervical spine has seven vertebrae. Five of them are impinged. It means they're pulling me in different directions. <laughs> and it, it travels down your whole entire kinetic chain. What's a kinetic chain? Tell your body. So my whole left side is partially weakened because of that. I have control over that. Of course, my bigger muscles counterbalance that. But not everyone has that ability. So if you're training, just train properly, train smart. It's always good advice to hear from someone that's experienced it. I mean, as myself as well. Um, Check out my page too. Unique underscore physique 23. Unique underscore physique 23. A lot of amazing content on there too. Educational and motivating too. It is. Sorry, John. No, I've even going back to your page. I, I, I actually, I've learned a lot because when you say check out this video before you post it, I, I learned things from you, especially like glute ham raises and- Oh, those are great. Yeah, a whole bunch of different corrective workouts. Th you, those really, really have helped me. You know who time. they give those explosive um, prone leg curls to? Who? Baseball players, fighters. It's an explosive functional movement for your hamstrings. It's not, it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite build all that muscle mass like stiff legged deadlifts do or leg curls but it hits the muscle on a concentric, which is a positive, but not on an eccentric. Anyone knows what an eccentrics are, they're negatives. That's the descending portion of the repetition where you're coming away from your body, right? That's where all the muscle tears are likely to happen. So it causes tissue trauma and that's what leads to growth. What happens, the muscle's broken down. Depending on how hard you're training, the fascia has been stretched, bruised, injured, hurt. What heals that, John? Tell me. You tell me. I taught you. You tell me what you what you uh, I'm going to take a crack at this. <clears throat> what heals it? When you do forced reps? No, what's going to heal that muscle? Reconstruct it. Build it bigger and stronger for the next encounter and the following and the following one. I'm stumped. Amino acids. So where does that come from? The building Protein. blocks. Protein. The building blocks of what? Repair and muscle growth. Well, that's what you were going into when you were talking about doing, you know, a activating mTOR, right? mTOR, mTOR. Emerson Mary. So there's this anabolic activation process. Because that does work. Yes, it does. It's called mTOR, Emerson Mary, T.S. and Tommy, O.S. and Octopus, R.S. and Ralph. It's kind of like the switch or the starter in a car. It starts the engine. The engine is the body, right? Something called leucine, an amino acid that's found in branch chain amino acids, so when you take that at about 2.5 to 3 grams, which would be like six capsules of your, BC, your average BCAA, combination with 30 grams of an animal protein, maybe eggs, maybe chicken, maybe steak, it activates that anabolic pathway for an older person. A person who's now maybe perhaps, not all, not set in stone, 35 and over, they become anabolically resistant. What's that mean? You're resistant to anabolics, not steroids your anabolic pathways to yes. grow. So that means if I think I'm getting 60 grams of protein through a powder form, my body's ability to only understand and comprehend anabolism is 40%, there's a lack in thereof. So how could I 
ignite that switch? How can I create that switch? Lucy, man. Well, that's the activation star that you were telling me about that really did work for me is that, you know, even knowing, you know, I never stopped giving learning. away priceless advice. By well, the way. this is great because it's, you know, it's advice that, that, no, no that's knows. real and that works because yeah. it's the little tiny things that I didn't realize, you know, it's like you take your BCAs, you loosen us, you loosen valley and all that stuff. It's great for you, but it's about hitting it at the right times, activating at the right times. Yeah. You know, that make a big difference. It's like, it's like uh, being in an interview. Yeah. One word changes the whole sentence, right? Absolutely. That one little tweak in your routine, <laughs> it could work wonders, miraculous wonders. Everywhere from pumps to muscle growth. I've tried it. I've used it. I don't vouch for something unless I tried it and used it. And there are a lot of things I've tried that don't work. This is one of them that works. Well, wrapping up this episode, I want to talk about one of the last gyms that I had been to that was part of that old school generation. Like a sort of new school now, which Goals. I think couples at all exactly Gold's gym, huh? it's it's the <laughs> best marriage of both worlds the golds in venice golds gym venice it's legendary um and when i go there it's funny because i say how have you been to bear francis but here's the mecca of the east coast it's the equivalent of golds on the east for people that don't know um but going into golds venice it's like you have a mixture of athletes actors entertainment personnel average people, average people new people and it's it's such an experience. I mean, I wouldn't even call it touristy because it really does embody the essence of the this newer generation, which is part of my generation, actually, because I'm smack in the middle of it, and the old school generation. And I feel like it's it's the best of both worlds. Like I, I feel like that if that formula was adopted elsewhere, it'd be oh. better off for everyone because they'd be able to have more people get involved in health and fitness because it's, it's a big promoter. It's a strong it. combination. Yeah, it's a super strong combination. Yeah. But that is it for uh, this episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for listening in. Thank you for, you know, thinking that we're not absolutely crazy and out of our minds. We hope we hope we are not <laughs> or try not to be. <laughs> just look like it. Yeah, exactly. Just look like it. Don't, bl don't believe everything you see. <laughs> <laughs> well, my name is John Kioskarigis. You can follow me on Instagram at John underscore Kioskarigis. And please follow, subscribe, comment at the bottom. We'd love to hear from you. We always are advocates about that. We want to hear what you feel like doesn't make sense. Feels like what makes sense. Feel like maybe something you want us to talk about or engage in or ask questions. And we'll we'll touch up on these on our um, Patreon that we'll have later on uh, where you can subscribe to that and get your uh, cool little goodies uh, nice. that we have in store for you. But um, this is Training Game Bodca Podcast. I Great John DePaulo, <laughs> unique underscore physique 23. Use it. Lots of lots of lots lots of motivating content. And not just to plug them. It actually is really informative stuff. Educational, motivating, everything. Thank you all. We love you. Uh -huh.